Is your support hand working? Today's video is sponsored by Backstreet Surveillance, Active Self Protection's trusted source for home and business surveillance. They offer free expert system design and quotes using their Backstreet Surveillance system design tool to help you build the perfect system for your application. They also offer nationwide professional installation, remote smartphone monitoring, and their revolutionary 364K camera to help you keep track of and protect that which you love. Check them out at the link in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. Hey guys, welcome to Suck Less Saturday, Active Self Protection Extra. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. Uh, when it comes to grip, we get a lot of inputs like grip harder. Uh, but whenever we tell somebody to try harder, uh, that is a non-specific directive. It just means apply tension. And in coaching, what we say is any athlete who is tense before the activity has judged the outcome already and therefore is not able to perform at their level. They've already started making corrections for problems that don't exist. Tension is the judgment of the outcome. So that means you're not in a process. Grip is primarily a kinesthetic. It's a feel. We have to grip the gun well, but we need to have feeling in it. Whenever we try hard in our grip, what happens is we lose sensitivity. In the right hand, that means we can't feel the trigger as well as we should. We can't move the trigger, the trigger finger the way we want to. In the support hand, sometimes it means it's not really connected. It just has a feeling of, of being on the gun and squeezing, but we don't really feel the gun as it's moving in our hand. And connection through your grip is the best part of, of this process. If I feel the gun in my hand, I can make subtle corrections if I trust myself to do so. It's just like driving. You don't grip the wheel too hard. Well, I guess some of you probably do. But you should be gripping the wheel lightly so you can feel the inputs. It's the same thing with the gun. Too much is bad, too little is bad. Somewhere in the middle. Now, one of the problems with talking about grip is there are all sorts of hands in the world. I have pretty big hands. What I want you to do is make sure that your finger can easily access the trigger and touch both sides of it. So when you fit a gun, you don't say it's comfortable. What you do say is, can I reach the trigger well? So. My fingers on both sides of it. I have plenty of room here. I've got an extra long. So this is the reason I don't shoot really small guns because uh, it's very difficult for me with bigger hands. So I'd rather carry a full size gun that I know is more reliable and I can shoot better in that situation. It varies for each person. You choose whatever you want to. Okay? But now I've got a good grip on it. What the primary hand wants to do is not squeeze. So you can see the fingernails turning real white there. What we want to do is grip the gun. We want this thenar to interact. We don't want the thumb to be involved, and I want to be able to move my trigger finger with ease, okay? If I tighten up my hand, you can see how it slows down and it tends to move the gun anyway. My support hand needs to relax completely, and then once it forms the shape around the hand, what I want to do is squeeze. I want to make sure that this pinky has got a place here because three fingers in the primary hand don't leave a lot of space for the fourth one, so I want to make sure that it's got a good grip on there. And when I squeeze, I don't wanna push the gun away from me. What I wanna do is clamp the gun. What we'll feel is the muscles underneath the arm do the clamping. Now what's gonna hold the gun still is actually the muscles in the rotator cuff, the sits muscles back there. That's what holds your arm still, not gripping. And the sights are gonna move no matter what you do. So I wanna make a good connection all the way to the back and then we're gonna push our abs down and out and give ourselves a little bias forward for the recoil. Now the real problem begins in the draw. So as I bring the gun out, this hand's moving at full speed, but this hand's paused because it's moved the cover garment or it's in a position waiting to catch the other gun. Uh, you know, if I wanted it to be there together, it would probably be out in front of the gun and that's no good. Uh, that means we muzzle ourselves. So what we gotta do is teach this hand to make a connection. What we don't want it to do is get the reaction of driving off the right hand. And it's really hard for the human body to do two separate actions like this because this one's driving, but this one will be slowing. And what I see with a lot of people is they form a good grip, but they both push hands, both hands push all the way out. The elbow locks, and what happens is the grip rotates. And if you'll just try it, put your wrist in a rotated position and try to squeeze, you'll notice you don't have as much power there. So this hand's actually the braking hand. So it wants to make a connection, and I'm going to let the bicep start slowing the extension down from the other arm. Okay? It's got to be ready, and I got to feel the connection. If I don't feel a good connection to the gun, I'll know I need to correct it on the way out. So I wanna be sensitive enough in my hands, sensitive Brian, to feel that connection to it. So as I go to draw here and it's catching up, that was a really good draw. How do I know? 
the sights told me so. Whether you use an iron sights or a dot, you're going to see them come in. If they come in in the correct direction and they're where they're supposed to be, you're ready to shoot and you know that you had a good feeling, you don't have to judge it with extra tension then, just shoot the gun, all right? If I make another draw, all right, that one's a little off. The hand over rotated and created an open spot in here so the sight went to the left. I don't want that. That was too much tension, too much drive. So relax here. I'm going to exhale and hum. And that shows me where my tension is. You could hear right in the middle, there's a little tension. So got caught on my shirt that time. Thumb flagged too much. Let's relax. And that's the type of draw that I want to see. This hand is actually creating the resistance of breaking and connection to the gun. Now, how do I know if I have a good grip? I've got to shoot. When I shoot, I don't really want a target. Uh, this is called the berm drill. I don't know who to attribute, whoever made this up, congratulations. But I'm not gonna shoot with a target because I'm simply gonna watch what the sights tell me. And there's only two possible outcomes. If it's shooting well, then let, keep shooting. If it's not shooting well, you need to make a correction. I'm gonna talk about tension corrections real quick, okay? So if I'm too tense, what we'll see in the gun is it'll shake a lot, okay? So I'm really gripping down. Both hands are really strong. I'm gonna fire three shots here. Okay. So, three shots. It really drove up and down hard because there was too much tension, too much judgment. As the sight came back in, I added extra energy every time so the oscillation got bigger. So that's too much tension. Let's try too little, which is very hard to do actually. So, in spite of having a 300 foot berm, the second shot when I had too little tension had climbed about 10 feet on the berm already. So I know that's too little. I don't need to keep firing it, all right? Now I'm gonna try to do just right. And if it's just right, I'll see it in the sights and I'll keep the shooting going. If it's too tense, I'll relax a little bit. And what I'm doing is creating connectivity to the gun. The dot was bouncing up and down. It had a little right movement, so I'm going to take a little pressure out of the right arm. Okay, that was much better. So I took a little tension out of the right arm. Better, okay? And that tends to be the problem for me is my dominant arm, you know, it has the majority of strength in the body, about 70%, and it really wants to push on the gun, and it wants to get involved in a worse way, but its job is to jab the trigger quickly in this drill, so I'm really trying to feel the connection. If you know you're connected to the gun on the draw, then everything's fine. If you're not well connected, you know you gotta make a correction, it's gonna cost you a quarter second, and then it's fine. And if you're not gonna shoot, shouldn't be drawing a gun and pointing it at anything anyway. So that's where we're gonna lie right there. Somewhere in that, create connection, create feeling, watch your sights. I know it's expensive, ammo's expensive, and you're just shooting them off in the berm. But as long as I'm learning from the shooting, there's no wasted rounds. I would think a lot of us shoot a lot and we don't learn from each one. And since the mind is negatively geared, it pays attention when something goes wrong more than when something goes right. So try medium, don't try hard. Watch what happens and see if you can get the best grip ever. It's gonna be a little different from each person. You know, I've studied all sorts of combat arts, Greco-Roman wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, okay? Knife fighting, stick fighting, uh, modern weapons like the blackjack and sap, all right? Shooting handguns, shooting rifles. And everybody has their take on grip, but it always comes down to connection, okay? And especially when you're in a grappling style art where you have connection to somebody, you learn very quickly that too tense is the way for them to get out and too loose is the way for them to fight back and get a hold of you. So we wanna have just the perfect neutrality in our grip, okay? Work on it, guys, it's hard and you should be constantly exploring it, and it'll change with time. You have to accept that. That's how human beings are, we're malleable. Uh, if you have an injury, uh, if you get stronger, if you get weaker, if you change gun types, it's all gonna change, and the only way that you can verify it is connection to the gun. So make sure you get a good connection to it. All right, I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant, and as always, measure, refine, and perform.